Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, and first and foremost, I have to thank you a lot for the positive feedback that I got in this video, or I guess the first episode of this series. You guys were totally on board with it, and you came up with some great ideas as well, I've added some of them to the wheel, and honestly, I kept forgetting that I even made that video, so I've been wanting to record another one of these, and I just literally kept forgetting about it. I've even recorded a bunch of other videos as well, but I'll try to put this one out before some of those and schedule them later, just because, you know... It's not really time sensitive, whereas this one is a series in a way, the others are just one-offs. So just to recap, here is our team. Our offense looks okay. Pasta was a massive pickup for us, and of course we also... No, we got Jari. There we go. He is going to be our starting goalie at 87 overall. Our defense is severely solid. Very good. We don't have a superstar defenseman per se, but overall, very, very good. And on that note, it's time to find out what three challenges we are going to be applying to the team this year. So let's go ahead, spin the wheel. The first one is going to be trade first round pick. I'm down for that. That's a good one. Just to clear up here, I mean, you know, trade our first round pick. We don't have to acquire one. That's a different challenge. The second challenge for this year is going to be... Okay, all right, not happy about that because that means pasta's out until the new year. Give me anything except for injuries on, please. Anything but injuries on. Cocky star player, what does this mean again? If I remember correctly, this means that we have to play our star player on not like the starting line. So if it was a defenseman, they have to play on the second pair. If it's a forward, they have to play second line. And if it's a goalie, then they have to be the backup, which I don't know how we could really enforce that. We'd have to turn off the auto-rotate goalies, I guess. But even then, I guess I would have to go in and manually rotate the goalie every now and then. But anyway, so pretty much this means that when Pasta does come back in the new year, he can't play on the first line anyway. I think the whole backstory behind that is that, you know, the player's too cocky, so you gotta sort of keep him in line, give him a reality check, and take them off the first line. So yeah, Pasta will be out until the new year. And when he does return, he'll play on the second line. I also think I'm going to wait till the trade deadline to trade our first pick because obviously that's when players go up on the block. So I feel like that's our best bet to get a solid return. Oh no, we don't even really have anyone I can call up. I guess Ryan Paling. Although this is super not ideal, it definitely could have been worse. That makes our team look so much worse. Truthfully, I'm just really happy that injuries aren't on. And just to show you, scratch players, we got past a right there. Let's start simulating, and I am only simulating to the new year. January 1st, he returns against his old team. That is poetic. You can't make that up. Poor Pasta, honestly. We just signed him to a big deal. So hyped to bring him in. He's probably gassed to come play for us, and then it's like, oh, by the way, doing this whole side challenge thing, you can't play till the new year, and then you can't play on the first line. We're actually not doing horrendous. We're third in the division right now. Holy, look at the guys go. They're rallying. They know that we have a challenge going on here. And they are stepping up. 19, 16, and 2. And we can put Pasta back in the lineup. You know what I'm gonna do? Pasta is a sniper. But of course. And so is Verona. So I'm actually gonna move Verona up to the first line. And move Andrew down. Because that way we have two way forwards playing with the sniper. And then Yamamoto is a playmaker. It works out. Oh no. Paling's on a one way. I can't even send him down. Nope. You're staying up here then. The Bruins are 29-9-0. They're clearly not missing Pasta that much. And we beat them 1-0 in that return. I would like to think that Pasta got the only goal for us that game, but that would just be too good to be true. I'm also trying to think here because these rules, obviously, they're not perfect. So if I got a player better than Pasta, that does that mean Pasta could technically go up and play on the first line and then the new player would be demoted. I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm kinda just winging it as I go, but I'm going to set us as a buyer because we have to get rid of our first overall, first round, not first overall. I hope we don't have the first overall. Spencer Knight, you know. 85 overall, medium elite, and he's only 22. We may or may not have just signed Jari. I could get Brett Pesci, but I don't know. We already have enough defensemen. I have follow, not justified by a first. I could also get some other players, but I kind of wanted to get one. I'm thinking we go after Marcheso here because he's only got one year left. He is 33. We could also add something else to this as well. Bring back a third, maybe? The value actually looks very uneven, so I doubt this is gonna go through, but I'm gonna try it. So our first, and then we get Marcheseau, who would be a new first line left winger for us, or I guess he could be a right winger considering he shoots right. He could take Yamamoto's spot. Proposed trade? Rejected. Ooh, okay. It's very rare that anything good comes in the seventh round, so this could just be the tipping point to make sure we get a third instead of a fourth, and they accept it. So there you go. 
Our first pick has been moved, and that challenge is completed. Wow, what a trade. Pelic, Monahan, a sixth, and Clutterpuck in exchange for O'Reilly in two seconds. So I'll do best lines for now. Head coach preferred lines, and past that, you're gonna have to come down, unfortunately, which means I'll put Marchessault over here. And is Marchessault a sniper? He's a playmaker. Okay, that works out really well. So basically, we got a first line buff. Two challenges are completed. We just have to keep Pasta here for the rest of the year. And that will be all three so that we don't put him on waivers the next year. Obviously, you know, that's the forfeit if you fail to do one of the challenges. Third in the division. Let's see if we can have a strong finish to the year here and make the playoffs in just our second season. Already at 40 wins, we are definitely on playoff pace if we can just not collapse entirely, which truthfully seems like a lot to ask most of the time. I think we're okay though. Just don't, don't you dare. Don't you dare. Thank you. Big win over Dallas. Shootout loss against the Kings. We take that all day. That's a point. And we are into the playoffs. And with that, all the challenges are now complete. Well, technically not. We still have to keep Pasta on the second line for the entirety of the playoffs, unfortunately. With 93 points, we finished second in the Pacific Division, a very close race between two, three, and four. The Tampa Bay Lightning take home the President's Trophy with 113. Where'd we finish in the league? We were at number 13. Not too bad. The 10th place Red Wings missing out. You absolutely hate to see it. And then the 20th place St. Louis Blues make it in. Jonathan Marcheseau was our leading scorer. Where is Pasta? Okay, I guess he did only play 45 games, but he put up 30 points still. That first defensive pair is killing it. I mean, they're plus minus, not really, but... Uh, they're doing numbers. 56 and 51 for second and third on the team. Our attendees definitely clutched up this year. 36 dubs from Jari, four shutouts and a 914. And then Thompson with three shutouts, a record of 8, 6, and 2, and a 9-10. Vazzy led the league with 44 dubs. He had a 9-10, 271. Igor with a 925, 226. He had a stellar season. With 79 points, Drew Doughty led defenseman. And the only other 70 plus is Victor Hedman, who got 75. McDusty gets the Art Ross 106. And then two players on the same team right there, Cooch and Stamkos, just shy of the 100 mark. That's gotta hurt. And Ovi plus Leon split the Rocket Richard this season. Here is our first round opponent. They got Patches, Trevor, and Vetrano on their first line. Silverberg, Terry, Shiri. They have a good team. I can't lie. A little bit nervous. Fowler and Drysdale. Gossespair with Jensen. Suter and Edler. What is going on here? Oops, and they're gonna have Gibson. Yeah, 91. This is gonna be a toughie. Just gonna double check that our lines didn't get updated for whatever reason. Yep, we're still good there. All right, let's do it. Give me a good first three games. Montana, you guys can do it. Oh my word. That's a great start. Can we keep it going is the real question. Oh no. Oh dear. We jumped out to a 2-0 series lead. Only to fall behind 3-2. What a joke. No goals in the first. We are out shooting them quite dramatically right now. Power plays seem to be kind of even going both ways. Oh, of course. Ryan Strom gonna bury one on Jari to give them the 1-0 lead. And then we give them another power play. Great job, Jaguars. Come toi. To, okay, chill out here. If we ever end up winning a Stanley Cup, it's gonna feel that much more rewarding. And I feel like we're also gonna have to get fairly lucky in terms of the challenges that are handed out to us for that season. But after being up 2-0 in the series, the Anaheim Ducks win four straight and put us out. The Winnipeg Jets take home the Stanley Cup for year two. Even though this mad lad was on the second line, he still put up point a game. Love that from you, Pasta. Let's have a quick... Peek at the awards here. There's all the team trophies. McDusty getting the first two. Hedman with the Norris. Cooch gets the Lady Bing. Kamel with the Calder. Shifley gets the Con Smythe. Igor with the Vezda and the Jennings. Not a big deal. Johnson gets the Masterton. Petrovic with the Jack Adams. Barkov takes the Selkie home. And then McDusty gets a Ted Lindsay with Ovi and Dreisaitl splitting the Rocket Richard. Also, here is the playoff tree. If anyone is curious, I don't see a single sweep. In fact... Every series in the East went to seven, except for the round one. Well, I mean, out of the first two rounds, I should say. They all went to seven, except for Boston and Ottawa in round one, which went to six. Oh no, there is a sweep. The very top left, Winnipeg swept Chicago. Here's the draft lottery results. Dallas moved up from 10 to two. That's a big move. You know what? Let's find out who retired. Louis, the GOAT. Shea Weber, 589 points. Kessler with 573. Okay, so... All in all, nothing too crazy here. If you think I'm doing draft interviews, you're out of your mind. Sim pick. Oh, Kasparitis, medium franchise to the Golden Knights. 
Koivu, and the third pick will be Meyer. We have pick 54. I don't even see any scout recommendations. Oh, there they are. Great. This guy probably will be gone by our next pick, so I'm just gonna risk it for the biscuit. Caleb, please, be decent. That's all I ask, okay? 47 overall, but medium elite. That means there's potential. We're guaranteed to get a medium top nine here, which I feel like is probably our best bet right now. And also, if you sort here, there is a gem. So I'm gonna try taking him next round, hoping that he stays. But for now, I'm gonna go with the medium top nine playmaker here. Yep, exactly what I expected. We're only at pick 87 and I don't care. There's really nothing else on the board, so I'm just gonna shoot in the dark here. Low elite, I'll take it. The scout is recommending Kirill to me. Defensive defenseman. And that's the only scout recommendation we get. I might, I might as well. I mean, I don't know what else I'm doing here. I feel sort of blind, so make that pick. Low top four, not terrible. Remember when I said I hope the scouts are doing work? They were, in fact, not doing any work. I don't know. Why not? Brady, let's see what you got. Probably AHL potential. Okay, well, on that note, this draft seems to be pretty weak other than that franchise player at the start, so I'm just gonna sim the whole thing. I only simmed one pick. We had one more pick. $28 million of cap space, and we have some big contracts to re-sign here. Oh dear, what happened? $8 million? Yeah, no thanks. I could try to get Verona for 5.1. I feel like that's okay. Sent Yam a contract for 4.2. I guess I could qualify these guys, but I'm just gonna try sending them contracts. Timothy, you're gonna have to step up next year because I am not re-signing Mans to an $8 million deal. No shot. I guess to be fair though, if we do let him walk, there's probably gonna be a player in free agency. These guys I'm not too worried about. Yeah, I'll let you walk to free agency. Jari still got him locked up. Thompson, we got him for one more year, thankfully. Part of me wants to just sign this guy and put him in the AHL, but no, I will not do that. I hope we even have enough cap space for all the contracts I did send out. Ooh, Verona said no, so did Yamamoto. Oh, we are in trouble. I bumped up the dollar value a little bit. There we go, nice. We got them. I think I'm gonna let Marchessault walk, and I think I'm gonna let Tony D walk in hopes that we can get a free agent. But we do have the money. I might just sign them both and kind of use them as trade bait. Or I might just sign Tony because Marchessault is 33. I mean, we don't really have a whole lot of room for him on the team, although I think he did lead our team for points. This is outrageous, but I'm gonna do it. And if we do find a better defenseman, we'll just sign them and trade this guy. I guess I can make that another challenge, that we can't sign any free agents. Holy crap, Austin Matthews is here as a UFA. $14 million. Who's making too much money? How can we free up cap space? I'm gonna make this work. In case you couldn't tell, this franchise mode is not uber serious here. Just trying to go for some extreme things, and Falk is a prime suspect to be traded away. I might even be able to get a first for him. He's making 6.5. He's 32. He is 85 overall, but yeah, that contract... I'm not a big fan of. We have a lot of defensemen in the system. Let's see if they will accept that. No, I will sweeten it though. I want this to work. Will a fifth do the trick? It is accepted. Nice. Matthews, here we come. Imagine he rejects after all this. We have $15 million of cap space and I'm gonna offer him 15 mil. He's 96 overall. What a turnaround for this franchise he would be. Just imagine the scene. Him and Pasta playing together. Nice. Okay, we got a coach who's really good. I forgot to re-sign the coaches. Yeah, I'm really bad for that stuff. I know. Hardcore franchise, guys. You're gonna hate me. Let's go! Both coaches that I just signed said they don't like the makeup of our roster, but they're willing to accept. Grow up. This is my kind of franchise mode though. Like when I'm playing just by myself and decide I want to do a franchise mode, I do wild stuff like this. Is it realistic? Absolutely not. But that's part of the fun for me. I'm also trying to finesse everyone's scouts just for fun. My GM rating slash reputation around the league, absolutely in the dumps. All right, let's see temporarily what our lines would look like. Are you kidding me? They want Sorelli to play on the fourth line? Absolutely not. I don't care that he has potential. That is not gonna fly. I kind of want to play Harley, you know. He's 80 overall with medium top four. He's only 23. Villamaki, he's also medium top four. He's 81 and he's 25. This is a tough decision, but you know what? I'm very sorry. I have to throw Harley in there. Jari somehow went up to an 88. I guess he did play very good last year, so never mind. That checks out. Our team will be absolutely nasty depending on the challenges that we get. Our HL team still looks okay. Oh, that's why. He's a forward. Yeah. 
Kind of need another defenseman here, I guess. All right, so I'm going to play Mr. Vinainen on the first line with Honka. Offensively, is there any players I have to play? I can't really think of anybody that we drafted other than that defenseman guy. I think we're good in net. We got Jakob who's going to be the starter. He's only 24. He's still got the medium backup potential. So hopefully he grows a little bit. Well, there you have it. That's year number two under our belt. We picked up Austin Matthews, which is outrageous. I can't wait to see how we sim. We're probably going to run into tons of contract problems soon. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed episode number two of this expansion challenge franchise mode. Again, if you have any wheel suggestions, go ahead. Let me know if you looked at the wheel and... Didn't really like one of the options on there or think that, you know, it's not necessarily the best to have on the wheel in general. Also, let me know. I will happily take some off. But on that note, I will see you soon where the Montana Jaguars continue into year number three with a new superstar in the lineup. Matthews and Pasta together. That's going to be filthy. Again, that's assuming that they get to play together.